Okay, 6.1 angles and their different measurements. A lot of this is review, some of this is vocabulary based, so I'm not reading the whole thing. Um, I'll try to point out some things that are important. For example, one way that we can uh, define angles is as rotations. Uh, you do need to know that a positive angle is a counterclockwise and a negative angle is a clockwise rotation. Um, you should also know then that if you do rotations that we have an initial side, we have the rotation, the terminal side, and then there is the vertex of the angle. Some students struggle a little bit with, you know, when is it positive, when is negative. Well, if you think of uh, starting on a positive x-axis, so if you let's put the angle and the rotation on an x-y coordinate system, and then if you rotate up from there, then up should be positive, right? Okay, and that works because up would be counterclockwise. And if you, again, start on the positive x-axis and you go down, well, down is usually considered negative. And that does work here as well. The negative angle creates, or the downward rotation creates a negative angle. Okay? Um, so we're used to dealing with angles and degrees. And most of the times we do with angles and degrees that look like this. So the whole degrees are parts of the degrees. Well, there's a different notation for that as well, and that would be with seconds, or sorry, with minutes and seconds. So the first tick mark here is called a minute, and the second, the double tick marks over there is a second. Um, the definition for a minute is that one minute is one sixtieth of a degree. And that means that sixty minutes would be exactly one degree. Well, a second is one sixtieth of a minute, so you just multiply by sixty again, and then you get the conversions over here. So using that, you should be able to go between the two formats. Now, uh, this is much more common, decimals, and it, it works easier. Um, but again, there are some word problems, so you should be able to deal with these. So how do you do this? Well, 45 whole degrees, right? And then to that, we need to add some parts. Again, if we know that one second, I mean one minute, is one sixtieth of a degree, then 10 of these, because I have 10 of these, should just be 10 over 60 of those, right? And then the next conversion is if you know that one second is one, th uh, that's one over 3600 of a degree from here, then to that we're going to add 15 of those. So that is 15 over 3600. Then you get a calculator, plug it in, and you should get the conversion into decimal degrees this way. Um, so that's, I think, it's the easier of the two because uh, you can do it in one step, sort of. If you had to go the other way, you actually got to do this twice. So you got to start with the 21 degrees, okay, and then to that we're going to add 0.256 of a degree. Well, we know that one degree is 60 minutes, so we multiply this by 60, and then that should give me 21 degrees and 15.36 minutes. Well, there is a unit smaller than this, so the 0.36 is a 60th again of the next one, or is, is uh, yeah, it's, it's a 60th relative to the next one. So we have to go one more with this. We have to go 20 degrees, 15 minutes, and then 0 0.36 times 60 again to get our seconds. And then you finally get your answer. So 21 degrees, 15 minutes. And then this is why I sort of don't quite get this. Here then we still end up with a decimal. So 21.6 of a second. Okay? Alright. Radians. Very important measurement. Very common. We're going to see these a lot. You should know what a radian is and where it comes from. So a radian is defined as the angle of rotation. So we're going to start over here, initial side. We're going to rotate exactly enough so that if we have a radius of r here and we do one radian of a rotation, we'll also get a radius of r on the outside of the circle. So I'm saying is that, or what they're saying is that if you rotate one radian, then the distance from here to here, if you measure it on the outside, along the outside of the circle, that is exactly the radius. So, if you have a radius of one, say you have a radius of one centimeter, because it makes sense to have units with this, 
I rotate one radian, then the distance from here to here, if I were to measure it, would be exactly one centimeter. And if it's three centimeters, and I rotate one radian, then I'll get a three centimeter arc over here. Well, knowing that definition should allow you to figure out why in the world they're saying that one degree is pi over 180 radian. Um, and the reason I say that is because we know that if we take a full revolution, so if we completely rotate all the way around, so we start here, we rotate all the way around, that is exactly 360 degrees. Well, the distance from here to here, uh, and that's given here with this little s, that distance is the circumference of the circle. And that distance is 2 pi times the radius. Well, that means that 360 degrees is exactly 2 pi radian. Because keep in mind, if I rotate one radian and the radius was r, I will get r as the outside measurement over here. So 360 degrees must have been the result of 2 pi radians. Well, usually we, we don't like this 2 here, so if we divide this now by 2, we get a, a little easier conversion. So we know that 180 degrees is exactly pi radian. Um, and you should be able to convert with that. So for example, over here, <clears throat> I'm going to convert from degrees to radians. Okay? So 30 degrees. Um, if you need to go from degrees to radians, that means you have to cancel the degrees, right? So that means that the 180 has to go over here, and that means pi goes over there. So I don't, I don't quite have these things in my head, I have, I have these things in my head. I have pi over 180 or 180 over pi. And, and, and that's what I work with. So, um, let's see, 30 goes 6 times in 180, so this is pi over 6. So if I do that with this one, 270 degrees, if I want to convert to radians, I have to cancel the degrees. So, 270 and 180 simplify, the degrees cancel each other out. There are three 90s in 270, right? And there are two 90s and 180, so 3 pi over 2. Uh, it's custom that, or you, or it's custom, if it's just given, if a rotation or an angle is just given as pi over 6, it's understood that that implies it's pi over 6 radian. Okay, so you don't have to keep writing radian, radian, radian over here. It also works with negatives, a negative 120 degrees times pi over 180. Um, so that's clearly going to give me a negative. The degrees cancel, the degrees cancel, and 180 and 120 have a 60 in common, so there are two of those. So this is a negative 2 pi over 3. And then with 100 degrees, um, and we're doing this one because as you do a lot of these, you'll see over 3s, over 2s, and over 6 a lot. But it works for any degree, so the degrees are still going to cancel. Let's see, these all have 20s in there, so that's 5 pi over 9. Okay. So how do you do it the other way around? Well, if it's 2 pi over 3 radians, and you want to convert that, then that means it, you want to convert the pi, so you take the pi out. Okay, so pi goes out, pi goes out, 180 divided by 3 is 60, 2 times 60 is 120. And that's, you know, negative 120 here, positive 120 here, but 2 pi over 3, right? Okay, negatives doesn't matter either, so you do exactly the same thing. So you want to go from radians to degrees, so that means the pi goes at the bottom. They cancel. Let's see, 180 is divisible by 5, it's 36. 3 times 30 is 90, plus 18 is 108 degrees with a negative. And then finally, 8 pi over 3. 8 pi over 3 is more than 2 pi, right? 8 pi over 3 is 2 and 2 thirds. And we know that 2 pi was 360 degrees. So I should get something bigger than 360 here, right? So pi over here, 180 over there. Uh, pi cancels. 180 divided by 3 is 60. 8 times 60 is 48 with another 0. So 480 degrees. If I did my math right. Hope so. Okay. Um, Quick conversions there, a couple of things that you hopefully are already familiar with. And then you have this lovely table over here. Um, I'm not telling you you have to memorize it right now. What I do think is that you should try to do all these conversions as much as you can, like I did over here, 
by doing uh, the map and looking for patterns and seeing uh, if you see certain values occur a lot. And if you do that, you'll quickly so you'll sort of get a feel for, for that 30 degrees is pi over 6 and 45 is pi over 4. Um, there are clearly some parrots in, over in this thing. And uh, actually, you'll see them here pretty soon in 6.2. So, thanks.